Welcome to My Grandpa's Train. Today's video is about what is inside this whistle generator box, and I'm also going to demonstrate how this particular speaker works. Stay tuned, it's probably not what you think. So we're going to be taking a look inside this vintage electronic generator box, and I want to talk about this here. This is a miniature speaker that would go inside a model train from 1950. And um, there's something unique about this. This is a traditional speaker uh, used in computer speakers modern nowadays, made by Samsung. Uh, it's probably a two inch speaker, uses a regular magnet. This one has three terminals on it. And we'll get into that after I show you the insides of the electronic whistle generator. Now this generator, I'm not gonna be testing today because it has no power cord. As you can see, this power cord is completely shot. The uh, vinyl rubber material disintegrates. Now these cloth covered wires are actually okay. They're not frayed and they're still safe to use. But what makes this possibly unsafe is the fact that this has original wax capacitors inside. And if you know anything about electronics and wax capacitors, those two do not mix anymore. Wax capacitors leak electrically and must be replaced. So with that in mind, Let's take the cover off this electronic whistle box and see what makes it tick. First, on the outside, we have the power switch on the top and then the lever called blow. So you twist it this way to activate the horn sound that this is supposed to generate. All right, let's, I have already removed the screws. Let's take the cover off. It's a little bit rusty and see what's inside. Okay, first of all, you can see underneath there's the lever switch up at the top. If I can get the light just right, the power switch. And then we have the top of the unit here. So we have, according to the schematic, one of these is a choke, one is a transformer. And then we have one wax capacitor, 25 microfarad, and then a filter capacitor. This is a uh, three in one. So this would be um, 150 watt volt. 150 WV and 50 WV with three different colored leads coming out of it. Now this is supposed to be a vacuum tube based generator and you don't see a generator there, but that's because I already have it removed. So this is the tube made by RCA. This is a Radiotron electron tube. And if you can make it out, it says 117P7 or maybe 117P7 GT. Most of that I don't know what it means other than perhaps the 117 is for 117 volt operation. Uh, some vacuum tubes run on 300 volts, some run on less voltage, some on more. This one is directly heated by the AC line so you plug this into AC power there's no step up transformer in the circuit. Let's take a look underneath and I have the bottom plate removed. So we have, as you can see, the components underneath. So here's the bottom of our three in one capacitor can. This needs to be replaced. And then the one on the top side, these are four um, very tiny value capacitors. Actually, I went looking for replacements and I don't think that you can get values this small anymore, at least not in uh, axial leaded capacitors. Anyway, the values for these capacitors are 0 0.003 microfarad, and these are meant to operate up to 200 volts DC. There's also two variable resistors here to make adjustments to the tone. There's these two little bulbs which resemble light bulbs. I don't know what these are or what they do. These are the resistors. I should know how to read their values, but you can kind of see the color bands. These appear to be the better uh, style resistors, so I'm going to say that those are probably just fine. Now I'm going to show you the schematic for this, which I have in this book. This is an American Flyer a repair guide by Tom Barker, and this is the schematic he came up with for this uh, generator. 
So I'll set this down so I can kind of point at it. So we have the power cord coming in and there is no safety features on this circuit. In fact, this uh, schematic doesn't even show the power switch. It just shows the power coming in. One side is tied to the X2 capacitors, X1 capacitors, and all the resistors, and then tied to the tube. This is the tube here, and then to the capacitor can over here. The other side of the AC line is then tied directly into what I'm assuming is the heater for the vacuum tube. So the vacuum tube runs straight off 110 volts AC or 120 um, nowadays. We have two variable resistors. So those are the uh, pots on the top there to make adjustments. And the X1, X2, the book does not say what they are. I have no idea what they do other than the uh, parts list says NE2, NE2. So we also have transformer one over here. So this feeds out through a capacitor to, uh, and then it's activated to a bypass switch. So a normal non-activated mode, the switch bypasses the circuit altogether. And then when you activate it, it switches to the other side here to send the tone over the um, low voltage AC line to the track. This says the other transformer, which is actually just a choke. That is as much interpretation and my knowledge of electronic circuits. I really wish I knew more because I want to get this fixed up and up and running. And the only thing that I know how to do is replace the capacitors. And even that I'm struggling to find the correct components for this circuit. Uh, so that is everything I know about the tone generator. So unfortunately I cannot demonstrate it in this video. But what I can do is I can switch over to my workbench and I will describe to you how this speaker works and I'll actually be able to give you a demonstration with this using just a standard audio amplifier of how this uh, speaker works. This is not a traditional speaker like this one. This is in fact a miniature field coil speaker. And I thought that field coil speakers were something from the 1920s and 30s. But no, they actually made field coil speakers up through the 1950s in this specific application. This is from a 1956 train and uh, it uses a, a coil of wire to generate a magnetic field inside this can. The, the cone is glued to the can so I can't take it apart and show you. But we have three terminals. The center terminal is common. This uh, terminal on this side is F for the field. So 16 volts AC goes to it. And then this side is for the A, so I'm assuming it's audio or the tone coming in. So that is the field coil speaker. Now I'll take you over to my workbench and give you a working demo of this speaker. Okay, so now what I've done is I set up my computer as a tone generator. In this case, I'm using the free program Audacity. And so what I did is I set it up to mimic what the... Um, whistle generator is supposed to do, and that is to generate a 600 cycle or 600 hertz tone. So let me play you the 600 cycle tone that the computer generates, and this is much more of a pure tone than what the oscillator could ever do. Sure doesn't sound like a train horn, but wait, because a speaker like this is actually uh, induced over 60, 60 hertz AC, that's the track power. Let me add in the 60 cycle hum. And uh, now this is what it sounds like on the traditional speaker. I'm gonna go over and play a, a steam whistle recording on my laptop. And this is what a um, real life steam whistle sounds like. So let me play this here over this little speaker. Okay, so that is a real steam whistle sound. Now, let me hook it up to the uh, field coil speaker, this one here, and I'll show you how this one operates. So now I'm actually hooking up the field coil to track power. And then this will give us a sound that is much more like what the uh, horn would sound like on the uh, train itself. Okay, so now we have AC on the, uh, now let me add in the track power.
That gets substantially louder, doesn't it? So now, let me go back and play that steam whistle over this little speaker. So that sounded pretty awful, didn't it? I traded out the AC power supply for a DC power supply. And now let's hear what this sounds like with a DC, uh, six volts DC going into the field coil in the speaker. I don't want to operate too long so it doesn't burn out. There's with no power. That's with DC power. Now I'm going to show you the live steam whistle sound So that's how the speaker works when it's the field coil is being used with a direct current power supply instead of an alternating current power supply. Well, I hope you found this video somewhat helpful and informative. Be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. I'm still hunting for parts to make these things work again. But until next time, thanks for watching.